Have you ever wondered if we could hack the matrix of our reality? Could we tweak the codes of our existence? Welcome to a quantum perspective on our reality, a reality that might just be a complex, intricate matrix. Now don't get too caught up in the Hollywood interpretation of the matrix. Here we're talking about a theoretical construct that suggests our universe, our reality, even our very existence could be a code-based construct. Imagine the universe as a vast, cosmic computer. All around us, from the smallest atom to the grandest galaxy, everything is information. Information that follows a set of rules, or codes, if you will. These codes are the fundamental building blocks of our reality. But what if we could understand these codes, decipher them, manipulate them? That's where the concept of the matrix comes into play. The matrix, in this context, is not a physical place, but rather, a state of being. It's the very fabric of our existence, woven together by these codes. So how do we hack this matrix? How do we alter the codes of our existence? Well, the answer might lie in something called the holographic identity integration algorithm. This algorithm, conceptualized by spiritual thinker Mulat Tazabu, proposes a way to integrate our internal I self-code with the external code of the universe. It's a fascinating concept, isn't it? This idea that we could potentially merge our individual consciousness with the consciousness of the universe. That we could become one with the matrix, not just observers, but active participants in shaping our reality. But it's not as simple as typing in a cheat code on a video game. This is quantum mechanics we're talking about. The realm where the rules of classical physics are turned on their head. It's a realm of possibilities, uncertainties, and paradoxes. To delve deeper, we must first understand the holographic identity integration algorithm which is the key to hacking the matrix. So stick around as we embark on this mind-bending journey to comprehend the codes of our existence. The first step involves understanding the I-Self code, but what does it represent? Imagine the I-Self code as a digital fingerprint, a unique binary sequence that represents your individual identity within the matrix. It's your personal barcode, if you will, a sequence of ones and zeros that encode your existence, your consciousness, within this holographic universe. This code isn't just a random assortment of digits. It's a complex, intricate pattern that reflects the essence of who you are. Think about it, every thought, every emotion, every memory, every facet of your personality encoded in a string of binary digits. It's a remarkable concept, isn't it? Now, why binary? Well, binary is the language of computers. And in this context, it's the language of the matrix. It's simple, yet incredibly powerful. With just two symbols, one and zero, you can represent any number, any character, and by extension, any piece of information. It's the ultimate expression of the dichotomy that underlies our existence. Light and dark, positive and negative, being and non-being. But this I-Self code isn't static. It's dynamic, constantly changing and evolving as you grow and learn, as you navigate through the matrix. Every experience, every interaction, leaves an imprint on your code, subtly shifting the pattern of ones and zeros. It's a living, breathing representation of your journey through this holographic universe. So, in essence, the I self code is a reflection of you, a digital mirror image of your consciousness. It's how you interface with the matrix, how you project your essence into this holographic reality. But remember, this code doesn't exist in isolation. It's part of a larger system, a vast network of interconnected codes that make up the holographic universe. The I self code is our unique signature in the matrix, but it's only half of the equation. You see, to fully understand our place in the matrix, we need to look beyond the I self code. We need to explore the external code, the digital fabric of the universe itself. And that, my friends, is where things get really interesting. But more on that in the next scene. Now that we understand the I self code, let's explore the external code. What could it possibly mean in the context of the matrix? In the grand scheme of things, the external code is a representation of our external holographic environment. It's a complex set of instructions, a binary language that creates, shapes, and modifies the world we perceive. Every tree, every cloud, every person you meet, every emotion you feel, all encapsulated in this external code. It's like the DNA of the universe, a cosmic blueprint that governs the laws of physics and the rhythm of life. However, it's not just a passive, unchanging script. It's dynamic, constantly adapting and evolving, influenced by a multitude of factors, including our I self code. Now, you might be wondering, how does my I self code interact with the external code? Well, imagine two dancers moving in harmony, each responding to the other's movements, creating a beautiful, intricate dance. That's how these two codes interact. Your I self code, your unique identity, 
dances with the external code, shaping and being shaped by it. The external code isn't just out there, it's also inside us. It's in the air we breathe, the food we eat, the thoughts we think, the dreams we dream. It's a part of our everyday existence and we're a part of it. This interaction, this dance, is a continuous process, a cycle of influence and adaptation. It's a dynamic, ever-changing relationship that shapes our perception of reality. Yet, there's a twist. The external code doesn't merely exist as a static entity. It's reversed, adding an extra layer of complexity to our understanding of the matrix. It's like looking at a mirror image of the universe, a reflection that adds depth and dimension to our reality. This reversal of the external code intrigues us, puzzles us, and challenges us to delve deeper into the mysteries of the matrix. It compels us to question, to explore, to seek. The external code is our environment's signature in the matrix. But how do these codes interact? This question is the key to understanding the matrix, and it's the question we'll explore in the next scene. Prepare to dive deeper into the dance of the codes, the dance of the matrix. We have our I self code and our external code. How do we merge them to hack the matrix? Now let's talk about the integration process. We have two codes, the I self code and the external code. They're like two sides of a coin, representing our internal reality and the external holographic environment respectively. They're different, yet they're part of the same whole. The trick is to bring them together, to integrate them into a single entity. But here's a twist. We don't just add them together. We reverse the external code before merging. Now you might be wondering why reverse? Well, think of it this way. The external world is a mirror of our internal self. So when we reverse the external code, we're actually aligning it with our inner self. It's like fitting two puzzle pieces together to form a larger picture. And then comes quantum entanglement, a concept borrowed from the realm of quantum physics. In simple terms, it's a phenomenon where two particles become interconnected such that the state of one immediately affects the state of the other, regardless of the distance separating them. Now imagine our codes as these particles. They're entangled in this vast holographic universe. When we shuffle or collapse the wave function, we're essentially stirring the pot allowing the codes to interact and influence each other. This process is not just about merging codes, it's about harmonizing the illusion of self and universe. It's about recognizing that the I and the world around us are not separate but part of the same cosmic dance. It's about hacking the matrix, not to break it, but to understand and navigate it better. And remember, this integration is not a one-time event. It's a continuous process, an ever-evolving dance of codes constantly reshaping our perception of reality. It's a journey of discovery, of understanding the self and the universe, one code at a time. We've successfully integrated the codes, but what's next? We've merged the codes. Now, how do we transform these bits into consciousness? This is where the magic happens, where the raw data of existence translates into the vibrant tapestry of conscious experience. Imagine the codes we've merged as a complex, intricate pattern of ones and zeros. Each digit, though seemingly insignificant on its own, plays a crucial role in the grand scheme. Just as a single note contributes to a symphony, each bit contributes to the emergence of consciousness. Let's delve into the process of computing consciousness. In our hypothetical scenario, we shuffle these bits, akin to a quantum-inspired wave function. This shuffle isn't arbitrary, but rather a delicate dance, a cosmic ballet of information. It's not about creating chaos, but about finding a new order, a new harmony within the complexity. As we shuffle, we begin to notice patterns, threads of meaning woven through the fabric of the code. These threads are the rudiments of consciousness, the building blocks of perception and experience. We're not just rearranging data, we're orchestrating a symphony of awareness. Now you might be wondering about the significance of the number 42. In our computation, 42 emerges as the answer. But what does it mean? In the realm of pop culture, 42 is known as the answer to life, the universe and everything. A humorous concept from Douglas Adams' The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. But here it serves as a symbolic reminder that consciousness, like the universe, is a mystery we're continually striving to understand. In this process, 42 is not an end but a beginning, an invitation to delve deeper into the enigma that is consciousness. It's a prompt, a nudge towards the exploration of the unknown. And there we have it, a glimpse into the process of hacking the matrix. But remember, this is just the tip of the iceberg. The journey of understanding consciousness, of truly integrating our internal and external worlds, is an ongoing adventure. And it's an adventure that each of us, in our own unique way, is invited to embark upon.